Hello, dear friends. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the Majestic Family Channel. Uh -huh. My name is Jory, and this is my lovely wife, Vinnie Orby. Make sure you subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done so, and comment down below so we can stay in touch. Don't forget to like, share, and turn on your notification bell so, so you know, know when a new video comes out. Thank you. All right. Today, Today, we are doing a little something special uh -huh. because it is subscriber request month. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Some of you have asked that we talk about our proposal. Our proposal story. So this is what the sit down is going to be Yeah, about. so when Bename proposed to me. You tried to me. <laughs> have several seats, okay? <laughs> We're a little old fashioned. That wouldn't be so yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I proposed to Bename uh -huh. and things surrounding that story. <laughs> if you have not yet already done so, please follow us on Instagram at majestic underscore family eight. It's story time. It's story time. <laughs> Don't give Bename any Pepsi. All right. We knew early on mm -hmm. that we were interested in each other as potential marriage partners. So how early? So I talking? knew I knew real early. Yeah, I I was like, this girl's awesome. I think I could marry her. Yeah. So and I think my mindset always was like, I'll be married one day. Mm -hmm. When I saw Bename, I mean, that gets into like where we met and stuff, I guess. But I knew very early on, probably within a couple weeks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Pump the brakes, George. Pump yeah, yeah. the brakes. <laughs> so I was like, what? Well, I think even like once I got to know you even just a little bit, I was like, well, if I'm going to be hanging out with you a lot, I should probably meet your dad. Yeah. And you were like, well, you trying to die to me. <laughs> She was like, no, That's no, not no, happening. we didn't uh -huh. do that. Since I knew early on <laughs> that I was interested in marrying Bename, I was already thinking of like, what kind of ring would she like? Mm -hmm. So we actually went to this hometown jewelry store and we were looking at styles and different things mm -hmm. and uh, found out that she liked the marquee cut diamonds. Mm -hmm. And what surprised me was as we were shopping, mm -hmm. so this girl is helping us look at different rings and different settings and all these different choices and colors and shapes. And Bename was like more drawn to the smaller stones. And I thought, what? <laughs> so like between myself and the sales lady, of course, we had to convince her, no, you need a bigger stone. <laughs> bigger is better when it comes to diamonds. So like, I, I guess you hadn't really considered that. You just thought, oh, that's cute. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of what, how I've based anything I look at is like, am I attracted to it? If it like okay. makes me feel a certain way, I'm like, that's the one. Uh -huh. And I didn't know the implications behind bigger stones. Like, cause you, I didn't, yeah. yeah cause yet. I didn't, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> I found the style you liked and I found, you know, the, the stone that would look good in the setting. And I picked out one that was a really good size. It was, it was really good size, especially for like, you know, the kind of money I was making as a construction guy. I didn't have all kinds of money, but like I had saved a little bit. I knew I would use that one day. And, and that was the perfect moment that I've been waiting for to buy this ring for my wife, you know, mm -hmm. for my future wife. <laughs> and so maybe we have a picture. You yes, have a picture I will insert ring? a picture so you yeah, guys so can guys, see now. Look at this beautiful ring. Yes. That's exactly what Bename loved. And mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, designed it. And then I picked out the, the actual mm -hmm. stone and everything. Mm -hmm. So, so this, this is what I presented to Bename. This yeah. is the ring that I presented to her. Uh, having our parents' blessing was really important to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to just rush in um, without keeping them in the loop. Uh, I al I've always had uh, a mindset of marriage where the young lady passes from the covering of her father's house to her husband's house. And so to go about it any other way is to usurp that authority and is to start yourself on a road in a bad way. And I didn't want that. So mm -hmm. in my mind, it was through the father and the mother of the bride, of the young lady, is the way you go to get to her. Mm -hmm. and, and and wanted my parents' blessing as well about her. So Yeah, I mean, he said, y'all, listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> he even went as far as saying that he looked at me, he said, I love you, but I won't marry you until I get your dad's blessing. I was <laughs> like, you tried me. <laughs> but it's, it's... It was that important yeah. to Jory. Like, we had our parents' blessing. Yes. You reap what you sow, right? So, I'm, you know, I, 
I didn't want to sow something that wasn't mm -hmm. good for our marriage. Yeah. I wanted to respect, you know, where she came from. So mm -hmm. that was important to me. Well, we had plans to go to university. Mm -hmm. And so we were asking ourselves, how does this work? Because we want to be together. We want to get married. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the way this relationship is moving. I, I wanted to have her as my wife. And yet we had like at least six years of school ahead. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, this is what we were thinking. We're like, do we go into our school then get back together? But how would right. that work? We didn't want to be apart. And so we sought counsel uh, from some people that we, we knew cared about us, or at least they were voices in our lives. Counsel, the counsel we received from people that we trusted was uh, not to have a long engagement, that it's not wise to have a long engagement. Mm -hmm. um, and also not to put your life on hold for anyone. Mm -hmm. I can remember my dad specifically telling us, don't put your life on hold for anyone. Mm -hmm. There was an instance where someone was there was a big event about to happen for them and we didn't want to do anything to overshadow it necessarily but we had already planned on being together before we went to school and so we didn't know how to handle it. and he said you guys can't put your life on hold for anyone you need mm -hmm. to move ahead mm -hmm. and so based on that and based on some marriage counsel we got from another couple we really trusted mm -hmm. we decided all right we're going to get married and then we'll move and go to school so this is kind of leading into that whole marriage proposal yeah so because speaking to Ben and father was such a big deal, <laughs> like you don't just walk in and talk to the man. It was impossible. Yeah. <laughs> what is possible with man <laughs> is not impossible with God. Great yeah. story. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, um, and when he saw a pearl of great price, Jory. he went and sold. Come down. Sorry. Come down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Uh, a little off track there. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I wanted to talk to Papa Samandu and, and in order to do that, um, I couldn't just do it. So mm -hmm. I was like, well, I got to do something. So I went to speak with her brother mm -hmm. who I knew a little bit, um, the second oldest brother in the family. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, a little more laid back. More, yeah. He's but working back. my way up the line. Toward <laughs> dad. So he said, yeah, seems good. You know, you, you should try to talk to dad. And so I did. Let me tell you, this <laughs> phone conversation could not have gone any worse. I, I really tried as hard as I could to do Poor the Jory. best I could, and I failed miserably. Oh, honey. And I, in the process, I managed to disrespect him mm -hmm. according to his culture and, and his understanding of, of the way things go and my understanding. And I, I, I can definitely admit I had a lot to learn. But I feel like I learned quickly and was able to move on. So, yeah. so um, yeah, the the end of the phone call, you know, it didn't go well by the time it was done. And actually, her oldest brother called me immediately and let me have it <laughs> and and told me I do not res disrespect their father. And I was like, ah. <laughs> and so I wanted to make sure I was following uh, some of the the or at least honoring some of the traditions mm -hmm. of her family from mm -hmm. from back home in the Congo. And uh, so I did what's called masanga, where um, the, the, the groom, the soon-to-be groom, brings um, a gift of beer for the father and his friends. It's, it's just a token of saying, you know, that you, you're honoring them. Mm -hmm. And then so he can give this gift to his friends and they spend time together. Mm -hmm. um, and so I did that. My father was there. My brothers were there. Uh, and so we, we did that. And... Um, and from that, that went well. Then my parents and your parents mm -hmm. uh, met up together. Just at, a, at a later, sorry. Later, at yeah. Later After time. Then from that meeting, then they decided they would, mm. okay, this is what, you know, these, these two want to do. Yeah. So let's meet up and discuss it. Yeah. And so that's where the real blessing came mm -hmm. in, where mm -hmm. my parents got to know your parents and they had a good conversation and mm -hmm. understood each other and, and said, okay, we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. And so to me, like understanding that these things all happened for our union really blesses me mm -hmm. to know that like it was all done in the light and it was all done you know with the blessing of both sides yeah. and and we actually saw a lot of those things play out <clears throat> it's interesting because i was talking to her dad about you know how do i make sure i'm following the customs correctly to honor your culture and at one point he said jory biname is becoming part of your culture so she she takes on your culture not vice versa 
And so while I do try to respect and honor that side as much as I can, I've not fully taken on the whole culture based on her father's words to me. Oh yeah, someone had commented that, you know, did Jory pay for me? Um, so <laughs> keep watching, we have another video on this. Yes, that. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so because speaking to Bename's dad was such a big deal and it was so important and yet so difficult to do, mm -hmm. it, it created this dynamic where Bename was totally aware of what was happening. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I could secretly go and speak to her dad right. and say, hey, Pop Samandu, and have this conversation without her knowing mm -hmm. because he wouldn't speak to me. <laughs> so, so because I had to go through all these channels, she was aware of what was happening, and so she was aware that the ball was moving towards marriage. Mm -hmm. And so the big fairy tale surprise probably wasn't there as much as it could have been. Yeah. And we could and I consistently look for opportunity now for where we can do something really really meaningful along those lines and we will we'll get to do more things as time goes by yeah but um so as that as that night approached i picked a date uh i knew what i wanted to do i wanted to be outside somewhere beautiful and i wanted to i definitely didn't want to use my car <laughs> I was not going to pick her up to propose to her in my car. We if, would have had a problem. <laughs> if you guys know anything about the car I drove, it was a wreck. Do we have a picture oh, of your car? Oh, I don't know. So I always tell everyone it was two-tone. It was <laughs> red, red and rust. rust because it was rusting out. It was an old car. I mean, oh. I didn't care for me, but I wasn't going to pick her up in it. So I have, I have a friend, a good friend that, that I've known for years and years. Um, and he has this beautiful classic American muscle car and uh, a, he has a blue, several. yeah he several. has he's a he works on cars and yeah. he's, he does a fantastic job I went to Rich I said I have a I, I didn't tell him but I think he knew I said I have a very special date coming up with um, the girl I've been dating for a long time and I wondered if I could use one of your cars to take her on this date and I was surprised he took this pristine blue Chevy, I think it was a Chevelle or a Nova, I can't even remember. I'll put a picture. But it's we'll a beautiful a car. Yeah, yeah, there's a picture of us standing by the car that night yeah. in front of your parents' house. And, yeah. And uh, so I, I drove up from my town to pick her up and picked her up. And I had this perfect garden where I wanted to go. It was like a Chinese garden in the city there. <laughs> and, and I get there and it is packed. There's people everywhere. There's cars and people. And May I was I like, say something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so he just told me this last night about the garden. We've been married for about 12 <laughs> years now. I had no idea that that was his plan all along. Yeah. What I saw was not what he's saying right now. So I was like, what? You didn't tell me this? I, so, but I was ahead. surprised because I was like, you didn't notice I was like driving around trying to no, figure out where I, I was going. I just, you just thought it was part of the part ride. Part of the ride. Like, just to like, enjoy a cruise together. Right, because <laughs> I was like, oh, this is a nice car. Yeah. Like, you know, I was like, oh, your friend let you use this? And yeah. like, yeah, I'm like, this is nice. So I just thought we were... Going for at, a ride. I think at one point you like pulled into a, a bank. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you were doing, like rummaging <laughs> through the back of the <laughs> trunk and I'm just like okay we're just taking a ride this oh, is our I was date. probably getting the ring yeah like I yeah. don't know yeah I, I don't think know. I was putting the ring in my coat pocket oh okay yeah yeah because I didn't want to have it while we were driving but anyway mm -hmm. I so yeah I, I drove up to this first spot and or I drove by slow at least and I was like peeping it and I was like oh, I don't want her to know I was thinking of going here until I know for sure and no it wasn't gonna work there's way no too idea. many people cruise on and I, I I drove by some places that I was like, maybe that could work. And I was like, no, like it was, it felt so like, oh. like not perfect. You oh. know what I mean? Yeah. Like what was perfect about it was I had the perfect ring picked out. I had the perfect girl to give it to. Oh, honey. And, and you know, there were a few <laughs> elements that were perfect, but then like location wasn't working out. Yeah. So then all of a sudden I thought I got it. The place where we went to one of our first, our very first dates was a fondue restaurant mm -hmm. and it was right on the river. Mm -hmm. And there's these beautiful tall oak trees, just mm -hmm. massive mature oak trees right next to the river. There's a path right there. And, and I remember that date because I found out I can't give you Pepsi <laughs> because you get really goofy and loopy <laughs> from drinking Pepsi. 
the sugar and caffeine. I don't know what it is, but it we were having fondue in this nice yeah. little restaurant, and Biname's like laughing and cracking up, and I'm like, what are you He was so embarrassed. <laughs> I've learned to loosen up over the yes, years. Yes, he has. I was really uptight. Yes. Um, but anyway, so I was like, that's the spot. We're going to go there, and, and it was perfect. Uh, we got out, and we, I said, let's go for a walk. We went for a walk down by the river, and... Uh, I had her sit down on this bench and I got down on my knee and I got down right in front of her and I was like, you know, open the box and ask you to marry me and we mm -hmm. both started crying mm -hmm. and what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> you are so silly! <laughs> so he started saying about how he wants to spend, you know, at the least rest a year of, or two. You <laughs> tried <laughs> the rest of his life with me yeah and that he wants to treat me well and, yeah you know just love on me and things of that nature so i said yes uh -huh. give him a big hug and you mm -hmm. know i just remember um like such a it was like a breeze a nice breeze that passed it so it went well mm -hmm. and and then i had made reservations at this restaurant that was a Greek, a beautiful Greek restaurant, and we kept driving by it when we would hang out, mm -hmm. and it looked gorgeous. It did. And, and yeah. we're like, man, I bet that's expensive. We could never go there. And I thought, that's where I'm gonna get reservations. And I did. We showed up. I had asked them for a specific booth. They said, oh, we couldn't hold that for you. And I was like, what? And then I kind of look around, and I'm like, this place is not that nice. It was bad. So, so like, just the staff and the look of the place were like, so this isn't going to work out mm -hmm. either. I'm like, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. So I was like, come on, let's go. We went to one of our favorite Italian restaurants, which ended up being great. Mm -hmm. We enjoyed the food and then went back to her parents' house and, mm -hmm. and told the family. Yeah, that's our proposal story. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little non-traditional and unconventional, but it's ours. Yeah. And, and there's a story about our ring that we'll get to sometime too. Uh. <laughs> We're still writing our love story. We are. So. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us. Yes. It's good to have you with us. And as always, dear friends, keep, keep looking, looking up. up.